the history of the Hawken, um, which is also very rich in history. Mm-hmm. And Hunter, we were chatting before the podcast talking about how um, the Hawken is, it was introduced much later. And so there's a little bit more detailed history of as to where it came from, who invented mm-hmm. it, things like that. Um, and so for those of you that don't know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Um, Jacob and Samuel Hawken, they were brothers and they came up with this idea for the Hawken rifle. They are, their father was actually a gunsmith as well and taught them how to do it. And they started up a business in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they, uh, went on in, in the early 1800s, they decided to make a, you know, it, it was a planes rifle design, but it was made by them. And so they made it very popular. That's why, you know, you hear the the Lyman Great Plains and the Hawken. Mm-hmm. They're very similar in design, mm-hmm. um, but Hawken was known especially for their, they were known for their exceptional quality um, yes. as well as using a slightly softer uh, iron in the, or steel in the barrel to make it a little bit easier to load and, and stuff like mm-hmm. that, easier with mm-hmm. fouling. Um, and so uh, they kept going. Uh, Jake Jacob Bridger actually, or Jacob Hawken actually ended up dying uh, in 1849 yeah. And his brother continued the business for about another decade before he sold it to um, J.P. Gemmer. And so you hear, you know, on our website, mm-hmm. we have the Gemmer Hawken and stuff like that. So Gemmer, he actually, he ran the the business until 1915. So he ran yeah. it for a really long time and um, was producing a lot of uh, good stuff. He was able to replicate the quality. Everything was still mm-hmm. good. Um, and then he passed, you know, he sold it, retired, uh but still hung on to the uh, the Hawken shop as if if as you will, mm-hmm. um, and then when he passed away uh, in the 1960s, it was acquired by a guy named uh, Walter Kennedy, and he gave it to his friend, um, and his his buddy was a huge fan of the Hawken rifle, so he felt obligated to um, continue to make them um, and produce them, mm-hmm. and so he you know did that for a little while, only made it around around 30 of them before he closed down shop in the eighties. Hmm. And then, uh, he ended up selling it to a family in Washington who, to my knowledge is still producing original Hawkins to this day. Oh, wow. Um, you know, that's as cool. from the research that I was doing. And so, um, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's interesting that that piece of history lives on, you know, yeah. that something yeah. as, as famous as the Hawken is still around to this day in a place that's, you know, pretty close to us, honestly. Oh, yeah. They're just north of us in Washington. So mm-hmm. um, it's really interesting to, to learn up on that history and stuff like that. So, uh, and so Caleb, I wasn't sure if you wanted to chat about um, just some of the, the Hawkins that, you know, we have in the planes rifle, stuff like that. Some of the, you know, like the twist rate. I know the twist rate is different than like sure. the Kentucky long rifle, absolutely. how that's useful and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as far as the modern rifles that that we have and that we're familiar with um traditions makes a, a full line of hawkins style rifles um as well as the the long rifles like the kentucky or the pennsylvania rifle um but yeah the hawkin um twist rate is what you primarily mm-hmm. wanted to know about um are right at one in 48 yeah which <laughs> for all of those you know both sides of the spectrum if you're a modern inline hunter or a traditionalist you'll know that it's it's a lot slower twist rate than a modern mm-hmm. and a little bit slower than like the Kentucky who primarily uses round balls. Why that's important is the one in 48 is able to accommodate a round ball or a conical shaped bullet. Sure. So you're just expanding the types of projectiles you can use for whatever application you want to use it for. Um, and yeah, it's still able to stabilize both of those projectiles and take down game or go plinking or go to a rendezvous and shoot yeah. at some targets. You know, they're both very accurate. Yeah, and it's it's nice to have that versatility because yeah. when you get with when you go with the Kentucky rifle, you're looking at like one in sixty, and sometimes even slower, mm-hmm. which is really it's excellent for round balls, um, but it's a little bit slow to stabilize like a you know a mini ball um, design. And so um, when you go with the the Hawken, you're able to get kind of both of those, and um, that's what the Hawken was known for originally was being able to you know is accuracy and range, and so. Right. Um, and, and also the percussion cap ignition that was kind of state of the art technology at that point in time. Um, and so, um, well, to kind of elaborate on that. So, yeah. So the, the Hawkins were originally flintlock as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Percussion cap really kind of took off kind of in the 1850s, Mm -hmm. um, and then going in, you know, later into the 1860s and stuff. 
Um, but a lot of the mountain men, which is kind of an interesting little side note that we're using it, which that's probably what a lot of folks, you know, when they come to our store and want to buy a Hawk and uh, I would say a good 70 to 80% of the time is, yeah, that's the gun that Jeremiah Johnson had in the movies, <laughs> you know? And so, which the legend of Jeremiah Johnson actually is really what caused that Hawken to boom in like the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. and I'm talking about the 1970s and 80s and kind of the recent, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, refascination of the American people with that gun. Um, but yeah, the, the mountain men actually prim primarily stuck with the flintlock version because mm -hmm. they could find flints and they could hand nap them sure. and then they wouldn't have to buy expensive percussion caps that they'd still have to ship. We still have that problem, right? They're still expensive to ship through the <laughs> <Yeah>. mail. <laughs> so, and uh, hard to find. That's right, so. and very hard to find right now. But uh, they had the same problem back then for different reasons, of course. But yeah, so most of them would stick with a flintlock. But yes, they wow. did make them in the percussion models as well. And those, of course, became very popular, especially you know, uh, for hunting applications, people who are recreationally hunting. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Hunter and Caleb regarding the history of the Hawken rifle. If you want to check out the full episode, then look up the Muzzleloaders podcast, which is available on all major podcast platforms.